Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Cool. Uh, so the first thing I've been told is not to say uh and um when I'm speaking. <laughs> I'm going to violate that first rule. Hi everybody, my name is Mick Luther. I'm the CEO of Pressful. Pressful is where WordPress works best. I'm going to give you a little background as to why exactly I, I think I'm qualified to talk about this. So Pressable started out as a company called PSD2 Live. Uh, most people don't know that. It's a shitty name. Uh, <laughs> it was basically a side project that I had that turned into Zippy Kit because I saw an email and I thought, hey, this competes with GoDaddy because GoDaddy was nicknamed Slow Daddy in my mind only. Uh, then we took on equity funding in 2011. We were profitable by early 2012, and then we were almost broke by, two, by the end of 2012. Most people who know me over here probably don't know that. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been pretty interesting for me to learn the ups and downs of being CEO and what, it, what exactly it means. Uh, 2013 was done, basically we turned the ship around. Original employees are still here. One of the things that uh, I learned as CEO was the term furlough, which is something that uh, we probably all learned in 2013 with the government prices and shutdowns and everything, and basically people having, not making as much money as they should be making because the leaders screwed up. Uh, one of the big things I'd like to do is some of the original employees are still here. Can everyone give them a big hand? Sometime in June, Dirk Elmendorf and I and Kai and Becky, quite a few of us had a 30 minute meeting turn into a eight hour meeting where we decided that we need to change the name of the company from Zippy Kit to something else. And uh, because of that, we changed the name to Crestle. We launched the rebrand on November 14th. And uh, it's been pretty awesome. Uh, we've actually like within five days of us changing our, our name, we saw more signups, or more new customers in five days than we did in the entire month of November. Uh, and we didn't change anything in terms of traffic or anything like that. It was just name and pricing that we changed. So it really talks, I think I learned a lot about targeting your audience and figuring out how to, uh, just what exactly your customers want, like lean startup, but in a very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, 2014 looks awesome. We're pretty excited about it. And so, from now on, from the next nine slide or next uh, seven slides, I'm going to talk about the lessons learned. Keep in mind this whole idea of me telling you what I learned over the past four years it reminds me of Chris Rock's joke about uh, the GED, uh, where he basically said you're going to take four years and cram it into six hours. I'm going to take four years and count it in five minutes. Three. Uh, so role of CEO. If you guys aren't CEOs right now, or think you're a CEO of a one or two person company, you, you probably don't understand what a CEO's main purpose is. Uh, Ev actually helped me think through this uh, two months ago in an email. Uh, the, the biggest thing in my job is to make sure there's money in the bank. Uh, hire smarter people and get out of their way. Uh, most people just say hire, hire smarter people. If you don't get out of their way, they'll probably leave you, so that's another thing you need to do. Sometimes you have to be the face of the company. So look, I'm speaking. I'm the face of the company. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to do things like mission, vision, BHAG, which is big, hairy, audacious goal, value proposition, and making sure that the company is always following and everybody agrees to all those things. Those things when you are starting out seem like focus, focus, magic, all these consulting groups and these Gartner or Gallup and all these guys tell you what to do. Nobody really needs that. You just need to build a good product and everything will fix itself, right? And investor relations. How do you talk to investors? How do you make money? How do you raise money? Why do you raise money? And what do you do with the money? Uh, one interesting thing that I was talking to uh, Nathan about right now was uh, I, I realized about a month ago when I was talking to another company over here when we were looking to raise money, 
I think I'm the only founder I know that has raised a million dollars without ever building a keynote or a PowerPoint deck, which is pretty amazing and at the same time kind of scary. And the last thing you do as a CEO is you're the designator. <laughs> uh, so how do you keep money in the bank? You raise more money than you think you need. Everything takes longer than you plan. So again, be sure of having when, when your programmers or your product managers say something will be ready on the 14th, will probably be ready on the 28th. Just kind of know that. Uh, another simple thing that most of you will go, duh, is spend more money on things that generate revenue. I spent a lot of money building really cool technology, and I can guarantee you that our technology is better than our competitors, hands down, and any day. Yet, we almost went bankrupt because we don't know how to do marketing. So you have to, if you, if you, all you do is spend money on building really cool stuff, go get a job for somebody who can do marketing. As a CEO, you're probably not gonna last very long. Your company won't last very long. Other thing I learned is uh, social skills. Being a nerd, being a being a programmer, being an engineer by by trade, everything is very factual and black or white. It's either good or bad. There's really no grays in that. And uh, when you start dealing with non-technical people in your company, and you will have non-technical people in your company, no matter how technical you think you are. Um, and, and salespeople are always non-technical, and you have to realize how to work with them, because otherwise you'll kill yourself, or them. <laughs> or they'll kill you. What's that? Or they'll kill you. Or they'll kill you. Um, body language, how you, when you're talking to people in a meeting, well, how I'm standing over here, it, unless you exude confidence, people will, will not have confidence, and people will not talk about your product or your company with confidence. Self-deprecating humor and humility. This is something I've been very guilty of. A lot of people have pointed it out to me, and as Eaton members, I'd love for you guys to challenge me on this. When, when I make a joke about myself and how much I suck, point it out to me, tell me to stop doing that, because it makes, when you do that as a CEO, you're, and, you, and you're trying to raise money, or you're trying to go get a big client, when they don't know you, and you make a joke that's only you know is, is a joke, sometimes you can lose a deal. <laughs> uh, general tone towards customers and competitors. How you think about your customers is how your employees will think about your customers. And if you think that they're all pains in the asses, all your employees are gonna think they're pains in the asses. And then you'll be broke. Uh, smile. Smile more often than you than I do. At least that's that's definitely that's a social skill that any CEO should have. If you aren't willing to smile, you better be Steve Jobs or somebody better than him, because you're gonna get. Okay. Are you gonna smile now? We haven't seen it yet. I'm smiling. <laughs> this, this is my smile. <laughs> and and the, the last thing it, it is really important is that the title CEO is given to you pretty much because, well, if you're starting out, the title of CEO is given to you because you decided to give it to yourself. But you don't know what it means, but it has a lot of weight. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg had a sticker, I had a business card saying I'm CEO of Pitch, it was apparently a joke, and it was designed just to be kept internally. But it, it does have a lot of weight in terms of, again, the last thing I said is your role as CEO is a decidinator. Everybody in your team thinks you are deciding those. So if your self-deprecating humor, or your, just your sarcastic humor says, oh, why don't we just go uh, screw somebody? Somebody in your, in your team will think that you're serious and they will try to do that. And that can cost you a lot of money. So be very careful of uh, what you suggest as a comment or a question because sometimes people will take it as a command. I just like this picture. <laughs> and one of the biggest things is, as CEO, you do have to realize you don't have to worry about everything. This is why you have hired smarter people. If, you're smart. The other thing, I'm not perfect. CEOs, as a CEO, you're not supposed to be perfect. You're not supposed to have the answer to everything. And your investors are not investing in you because they think you have the answer to everything. 
they they know that it's a risk and they also sometimes have answers for the questions you may have so learn to leverage your investors and your employees if you don't uh, <coughs> you end up being the opposite of that picture you worry a lot you lose a lot of hair you gain a lot of weight and uh, you lose a lot of sleep. And, and it, it's just not fun. It, it's just, you're not gonna have fun doing this. But at the same time, if you, if these couple of things that I can share with you help you think, go through your startup and go through your idea of, holy crap, I'm the CEO and I'm running out of money or I don't know how to do something and my title says CEO and my employees are looking for direction or help and I don't know what to do, it's okay. More, more than likely your employees know that you don't know what you're doing, because they can tell. Uh, Kai, Kai was probably one of the, the, when I, like last December, I called Kai up and said, hey, uh, we're broke, uh, we're, we may have to lay some people off and everything. And one of the things he, he, he kind of said was like, well, I know I'm, I'm doing this, it's a risk that I'm taking, and you don't like, why are you trying to put all of this on your, on your own shoulders? It's a, don't assume that just because you're CEO that people are working with you that you are 100% responsible for them. Becky and Josh have said it, said, said it to me as well where every time I've said, hey, um, I don't think I'm paying you guys enough. Don't say that as CEO or don't tell your investors you're saying that. But um, no, when I, when I tell them that, they, 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 they understand that the risk that they're taking by, by taking on a smaller paycheck right now for a bigger reward. And these are all adults, these are not kids. Don't try to think that you are responsible for every, every, everybody else's family, because hopefully these people are making these decisions sober <laughs> when they come to join me. Yeah. Uh, when I end this with the uh, like, uh, going and stuff, you would think I would have something. I think this is a, a pretty interesting thing about, this, is, this quote by Robert Strauss is a, a sports illustrated writer pretty much sums up my attitude about quitting or not quitting. There were, there were plenty of times where I had the opportunity to just go, fuck it, I'm gonna, I can shut this business down or I can go find a buyer for the company. There were a couple of investors, potential investors, who actually said, if you're willing to sell the company, I will put in, a, I'll do a bridge round and you can sell the company. And uh, it, it, it's just, it's just something that you, I, I, I didn't want to do, and this this quote, uh, success is a little is a little like wrestling a gorilla. You don't quit when you're tired; you quit when the gorilla is tired. Like you have to know that. Like you have to truly believe that, and that's it. I think I'm over my time. Q and A. Yeah, we're going to time for questions. Questions, comments. How much time did I take? Ten. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's only twice as long as you get. Yes, sir. So I'm curious when you talked about reconciling your personality as a geek with what the demands of a CEO require. Um, how much of that is external, and how much of that has to be internal? What do, you mean? do you change the way that you think about interacting with people, or are you mostly dealing with changing the mechanics of that interaction? It's a combination. You, you, like, you can't fake it. You can't fake being, being around people and liking being around people. So what you have to, like, Nan is a, is a perfect example of somebody. He's like a spiritual advisor to me, but he also recommends all kinds of books to me. And uh, one of the big things is like empathy. You have to start realizing what other people are, are thinking and seeing when you are talking to them. And if people are not very technical and aren't used to programming syntax, they will take your words literally. They will take things, they, they, will know, they, they won't know when you're kidding, they won't know when you're serious. Uh, they won't, they can't, they can't read your language your body language, so you have to understand what they're saying, why they're saying it, and then be able to reciprocate to them. If you can't do that, 
maybe CEO or maybe, maybe being the face of the company isn't the right. And again, this is my opinion. Could be wrong, but I'm probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so you, you presented an idea that I thought was kind of interesting that whenever you're facing problems being open to both your employee and your investor, so I was just curious, did, did you find in your experience there was a different way you would package those problems if you were speaking to your employee versus you were speaking to your investor and advisor? No, because the problem's the same, right? Um, I think like if the company is bigger, maybe I would do things differently. Like if I was at 100 employees, then maybe not really all of the 100 employees need to know exactly the details. But when you're less than 10 people, uh, the problem is the same problem. And so no, I wouldn't do anything differently. As a, as a fellow Geekdom member, I'm telling you to stop being self depreciating because that tomatoes comment is very self depreciating. <laughs> <laughs> I like tomatoes when I'm Geekdom. No, that's what I'm never eating. You're hungry. Oh, good question. So, how did you come up with the name Possible compared to the other two names? What made you make that decision? So, Possible is. One, we, we, we talk a lot about internally about what is it that our mission is, what our vision is for the next 10 years, and what exactly are we doing. And uh, one of the things Mr. Weinkranz behind you will tell you is that we're not a hosting company. We're actually we're helping people publish branded content online. So we're publishers. So the word press is related to publishing and press. And able is related to like ability and what are you capable of doing. How did we come up with the name Pressable? It was, we, we hired a company called Heavy Heavy, uh, a guy named Darby who runs it over here. Uh, he came to us with uh, five choices. We decided Pressable was the best one and uh, paid a lot of money for the domain name and bought a lot of drinks to for some people at Twitter to get Twitter in. <laughs> we have time for one more question. I'm gonna take it, so sorry. <laughs> what was uh, the other name besides those five? Okay. One of them was uh, <laughs> <laughs> press.to. Press.to, press so it was just press to or presto. Uh, Zippy cat. Zippy cat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was just there to just see how serious we were. Uh, they were Swirly like or something? Presley or something? Yeah, it was like Swirl. Swirly. It was Presley. It was Presley. Uh, one of the things that we also did in, in, with the five names was how easy would it be for people to remember and say? Because saying Presto, nobody would ever have gone to our domain name because we couldn't get Presto.com. And uh, like the .ly stuff, we couldn't get the .com, didn't want to deal with that. And Pressable is, it's easier for me to explain Pressable than Presto. All right, now I'm really going to take the last question. Lid, how can we help you as a community? Um, we're looking to hire people. Uh, we're, we still suck at marketing, but we're getting better. We need more marketing people. We need uh, help getting the word out. We need, so if you guys think you can help us either with support or programming, Ruby on Rails or PHP, or system administrators, DevOps guys, I'd love to talk.